Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Kisu. So first of all, I have to say this. At this point, I don't really know how to pronounce this word because I've heard soldrin, I've heard sorin, I've heard a lot of different versions. <laughs> so I'm just not really sure about it anymore. But in today's video, I'll show you the basic tools that you need and I will show you how to do it and also give you some tips and tricks please don't forget that i'm self-taught and basically i taught this to myself and whilst i'm doing it i'll try to explain some of the tips and tricks to you um you can try this at home it's not too difficult but it's also not too easy so you really need to practice but even some days even if you master it some days it just won't be perfect and it can be quite frustrating so be patient because it is a bit difficult so let's start with the basic tools first what you need is this i think it's called a sudden iron and this one like this um there are different types but you need to get one that you can change the temperature because temperature is really really important like it's the whole thing about this spiky stuff um as you can see here here i can see my temperature i can change it i think this is like a very beginner friendly one it's really easy to use and everything and you don't need something really expensive to be fair they're not expensive but you, you don't need something really big like for example this one this one is not really beginner friendly or i don't really know you can also use something like this but this is like bigger and you don't really need something like this i just have this for lost wax i'm not using this for my serene so yeah i can change the temperature with this one as well but this is more like delicate and intricate with the temperature Mm, but you definitely don't need something like this. The other one is cheaper. I used to use that one. This is only for lost wax, so you probably don't need something like this. So they usually come with sponges. As you can see, I've been using this for a while, but I think they're pretty useful. You, you need to use them to clean your tip. I'll explain that more. It's very crucial. Or if you don't want to use a sponge, you can also use this stuff. It's like copper brass i don't really know but um you can literally find this in a lot of different places and i think it's very easy to find one of these ones as well so it really depends on what you prefer but again a sponge and this or this one you have to have one <laughs> so if you're not working with watches like you can also work with crystals or other stuff and I'll show you a few examples. You, you will need some pliers because you won't be able to touch them. So a few pliers too, probably enough. I have one that is like completely flat and one that is more like this. I sometimes change it depending on what I'm using it for. So I think having two is the best so i have this for a while as you can see it's not that clean even that clean but like i can't even get rid of this stuff anymore but um you have to use this this is for like this mat is like heat resistant so when i use my iron i always put stuff on this because it just won't get burned or anything so it's i think it's very useful but also you have to have it and another thing is a mask now some people say that they don't need one the thing is because of the materials that we're using it's fine not to use one however i always use one and also i have migraine so if you have migraine you cannot survive without a mask because it, it will trigger your migraine and it will be really bad just to make sure your safety and everything you should probably use one and i've been using this for a really long time um this is a film extractor i think this is a must as well i mean it comes with these third arms to something i can't remember what it's called but um it's very useful because it cleans the air even though you always need air 
my mask is now visible now, so this makes sure that I don't have any fumes left in the room. Otherwise, even if you have a mask, the room gets like all like fumy and it really stinks. So this is a really good thing to have. Flux. If you don't have flux, we can use isodine, we can bind things together. Um, I think this, so this is a liquid one, but if you don't want a liquid one, there's also a paste and I can't, I don't really know, like there's a paste and something, you mix them together and you basically make your own liquid, but you can literally just buy this liquid. I read so many reviews about the paste and the other thing that you mix together, but this is basically that anyway. So you can just buy this one and just use it. I think this is pretty good. I, I'm, I'm happy with it. This little thing. Um, so this is the lead free one and this is really important you have to buy the lead free one Because first of all the ones with lead they're not good They're not good for your body or anything and they I think they're poisonous or something It's not good for you and also for your skin. So you have to buy lead free ones There are a lot of different options when I first started I was buying these like kind of like thin ones because I didn't really know what to do with them but I'm happy with them because I got used to them like this and this is the main thing which is quite expensive but for reasons and you'll have to use it a lot so yeah but make sure that you buy a lead free one. I forgot about it in the picture, we also need these copper tapes, without these copper tapes we can't use the sodium like we can't bind them together and this is a like crucial like without this you can't do it at all. But that's basically it, let's get started. Okay, so first of all, we have everything that we need. We have our copper tape, lead free solder, this kind of tweezer. I'll explain why we need this. So, I saw an iron this here to clean our tip, this one, or a sponge. And our flux, they're all here. We're gonna make a watch this one but i already have this one so we're gonna use this one so basically what we do with the copper tape is we need to use the copper tape to create this area because we're gonna work on this bit right and with a tweezer we're basically making it like really like snug like flush and nice if this looks nice like this then it won't come off so we need to make sure that this is nice. If you have a good base and the thing itself is gonna be nice, it's really important. So when you buy a certain iron, you will get a few different tips. A person, and my favorite tip is this one. Here, if you can see it. And that's because it's not too thin, because if it's too thin, you will lose a lot of temperature. And if it's not too thick, which means I can literally make these spikes easily. So this is my favorite bunny. But I did try all of them, so I think you should also try it to see what, which one you would prefer. Because maybe you'll find easier to use with a thinner one or a thicker one. So make sure you use all of the tips. And also here, I will leave you my first tries. So if it doesn't look nice at first, that's pretty normal. And you'll just get used to it anyway, so it's fine. So what we do next is we get our flux. Now, the important thing with this flux is if you use a lot, it won't be good. Because you might think that if you use a lot, It'll be better, but actually, if you use a lot, this means that this can come off this copper tape. So just use enough. Making sure that it goes to all these copper sides. We will clean it once we're done. So even if it gets here, it's completely fine. Don't be worried about that. And that's it. We will give it a few minutes. I will explain this before we start because this is one of the most common questions. So the thing is, the temperature is everything with this one. Because if your temperature is not enough, you won't be able to get anything on your tip. If it's too much, it's going to turn into like liquid. You won't be able to do anything with it. 
Mm, it also depends on the temperature of your house. Like if it's summer, you need a different temperature. If it's winter, it's cold already, you need a different temperature. So it depends on a lot of stuff and you will have to find the best temperature all the time. I personally normally use something between 360. Sometimes you will have to change the temperature time to time. And if you're using a sponge, don't forget that you'll have to change. Like there's going to be a few seconds that you lose temperature. I never had an issue with that personally. So you can literally use both. Well, for now, I'll just use a sponge because I'm making it like very beginner friendly. <laughs> so here you can see. It usually takes a few seconds. I usually start with something like this, like 350 and kind of like feel it. And after a while, I change it depending on how easy it, it is. So because I've been using this for a while, it's like this. <laughs> What's important here is you have to clean it all the time otherwise if your tip gets like burnt or if your tip gets like this you won't be able to pick the solder so that's why you have to keep it real clean so look here you should be able to see this yep that's it Let's see it here See, it's not moving now, so I need more temperature because it's already cold here. So I'm changing this, cleaning it. I don't know if you can see the fumes. That's why we need the extractor because I'll start in a few seconds. You won't be able to see those fumes again. <laughs> 